the yellow Ferrari 499P driven by Robert Kubica, Robert Schwartzman, and Ife Yi in the number 83 AF course, was the overall winner at the Lone Star Le Mans at Coda and became the sixth different winner in the hypercar class in the FIA WEC 2024 season. It was the first time Ferrari was able to finish in first overall position in a non-24 hours Le Mans race since they joined the hypercar class in 2023. The only victories for the Maranello's manufacturer were only at the last two editions of the 24 Hours Le Mans with the number 51, Alessandro Pier Guidi, Antonio Giovinazzi and James Collado, in 2023 and number 50 with Antonio Fuoco, Miguel Molina and Nicholas Nielsen this year. The 83 crew, which started in second position, had a very solid performance at the front with great stints from Robert Kubica, Ife Yi and Robert Schwartzman. At the first hour of the race, Kubica, after a solid start, was being faster than the number 51 driven by Antonio Giovinazzi and with that, the Polish driver was able to take the lead. The number 83 had led the race for almost four hours of the race, but in fifth hour Toyota number 7 made an undercut and became the new leader. Kemui Kobayashi after taking the lead, started to stretch the margin, but with 45 minutes remaining, the 7 car got a drive-through penalty for not respecting the double-waved yellow flag zone. Kobayashi returned to the track about 10 seconds behind Schwartzman and there was time enough for the Japanese driver to recover the lead. However Kobayashi wasn't able to overtake Schwartzman and with that, the number 83 took the checkered flag, and the Car 7 Toyota Gazoo Racing finished in second and number 50 Ferrari AF course was third. Lone Star Le Mans was a tough race for Porsche Penske at Coda. In the qualifying session, Kevin Esther with the number 6 didn't qualify for the Hyperpole session finishing in 14th, but at least Matt Campbell was able to make it finishing in 6th which was also the final result in the Hyperpole session. And in the race, the start was not so good for Porsche Penske because the number 5 forced to pit on the opening lap because the team forgot to remove the safety cone from the top of the pitot tube and dropped to last place with that. And while its sister car number 6, Lawrence Van Thor and later Andre Lotterer and Kevin Esther were struggling even managing to be in the top 10 with the pit stops and also some incidents and penalties of their opponents. In the fifth hour of the race, we had a scary moment for the number 6 when Sebastian Buemi squeezed Kevin Esther at the long straight with the Frenchman almost crashing into the wall, but at least the Porsche didn't have any damage while the number 8 got a puncture on rear left tire. However one hour later when Esther was in fifth, he got a drive-through penalty for not respecting the yellow flag and with that, the number 6 dropped to 7th position. But Esther was able to rise to 6th position because the BMW number 20 got a 100 second stop and go penalty due to a technical infringement. The final results were 6th position for the number 6 and 7th for its sister car number 5. Coda was very interesting round for Alpine Endurance Team and BMW M Team WRT. The French manufacturer brought reliability-focused engine updates. And with that, the car number 35 with Charles Malesi was able to qualify to the Hyperpole session and in there, finished in fourth position, showing a great potential from the A424 LMDH car. And in the race, we had a very solid performance from Alpine besides Mathieu Vaxavir involved in an incident with Earl Bamber on the opening lap which costed a drive-through penalty for that. But even the penalty for the car number 36, both cars were able to finish in the top 10, with the 35 being the 5th position, the best result this season, and its sister car finished in 9th. And about BMW WRT, we saw a great progression from the German manufacturer with interesting performances in the free practice sessions and both cars managed to qualify to the Hyperpole session with the number 20 in 7th and its sister car the 15 in 8th. And during the race, BMW kept a great performance with the 20 eventually being the overall leader of the race. However there were incident and penalties which made both BMW cars to drop positions. Marco Whitman with the number 15 spun in the second hour of the race, but the car was able to finish in the points in 8th. And its sister car 20 got two penalties which made them drop a lot. In the fifth hour was a drive-through penalty due to the full course yellow infringement and at the final hour of the race, they got a 100 second stop and go penalty due to a technical infringement and with that, the number 20 dropped to 13th position. Once again Peugeot had a very disappointing performance in the hypercar class this year. Since the French Lions released its new version of the 9x8 at the 6 hours of Imola race, they never had a great performance to be fighting for the podium like they did at Qatar in the season opener. 
At Coda, both Peugeot failed to qualify to the Hyperpole session with the number 93 being in 11th and its sister car number 94 in 15th. And when the race started, the 94 being driven by Stoffel van Dorn suffered with a tire puncture on the opening lap. And in the fifth hour, the same car stopped on the track and with that, the number 94 retired from the race. Its sister car number 93 even being able to finish the race, didn't make any impact and its final result was 12th place. Once again, Peugeot disappointed everyone with its poor performance. What's wrong with the 9x8 2024 version? And in the LMGT3 class, Heart of Racing number 27 had a maiden victory at Coda because the team was the pole position and kept the lead in the full race. A very deserving win for the Seattle-based team. But who is unbeatable is Manti Racing, especially the number 92 Pure Racing which is the current LMGT3 championship leader and could be officially champion at the next round in Fuji. The 92 crew with Alex Malikin, Joel Sturm and Klaus Backler was able to finish again on the podium in second place at Coda. So these were my review about the Lone Star Le Mans race at Coda which was the sixth round in the WEC 2024 season. Did you enjoy the race? What's your opinion about the Lone Star Le Mans at Coda? So let me know in the comment sections below. And don't forget that next week we will have the 6 hours of Fuji which promises to be very exciting. Because of it, consider to subscribe to the channel. We see you in the next video.